You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Here we are, sir. Ah, oh, the old inn on the square. <laughs> yes, sir. How perfectly charming. You have been here before? No, no, no. It's just, just as the guidebook said. Let me get your bags. In a moment. First, let me see uh, if they have accommodations. Very good. I'll wait, sir. Hello? May I help you? Good day, I... I've just arrived in your town. Yes, sir. And I was wondering, do you by any chance have a room available? Let me see. Uh, that would be a single? Yes. Yes, I'm traveling alone. I can give you a lovely front room overlooking the square. That would be perfect. Would you care to see it? No need. I'm sure it will be quite satisfactory. In that case, welcome. If you would be so kind as to sign the guest book. Of course. Thank you, sir. There was something else. No, sir. Well, then. Yes? The key. Oh, yes, the key. Mr. Schmidt, is it? That's what I've written. Of course. Of course what? I mean, sir, I just wondered, well, it was just that... You wondered what? It's just that you remind me of someone, Mr. Schmidt. Oh? During the war. The war, so long ago. There are times when it does not seem so. I suppose. There, there were SS stationed here. You don't say. They used to come to the end very often. Did they? When they were off duty. Well, that must have been a very busy time. Busy, sir? Eventful. Yes. Well, then. Will you be taking your meals with us? Perhaps. I should like to explore the town first, see the sights this afternoon while there is still light. As you fish. Ah, yes. Very, very quaint outside, isn't it? Quaint? Picturesque. Some have said so. You'll be here long? A day or two, perhaps. I'm not sure. You see, uh, I'm on holiday. And you've never been here before? No, never. I, I'm told the scenery is lovely. I understand there's a wonderful old medieval castle one can visit. Castle? Oh, yes, sir. Very old. And other things? What do you mean? Other sites. What, what would you recommend for a tourist? Very little else, sir. Very little else of any particular interest. I'm told, though, that the town was quite active during the war. Active? Sir, it was like... Well, it was like most places in Germany. Ah, but I'm told that it was not like most places. I'm told that it had some special attractions. Uh, what was it? Um, a work camp or something that you had here? Something of the sort, sir. Well, was it a camp or not? A camp, sir. How's that? A camp, Mr. Schmidt. A, a concentration camp. You mean a relocation camp? Really, now, that's odd. I... I'm getting old, I guess. <laughs> For the life of me, I, I can't seem to recall the name. Sir? The name. Surely I must have read about it. What is the name of this town? Dachau, sir. Dachau. Mr. Schmidt recently arrived in a small Bavarian village which lies eight miles northwest of Munich. A picturesque, delightful little spot once known for its scenery, but more recently related to other events having to do with some of the less positive pursuits of man. Human slaughter, 
torture, misery, and anguish. Mr. Schmidt, as we will soon see, has a vested interest in the ruins of a concentration camp. For once, some years ago, his name was Gunter Lutz. He held the rank of captain in the SS. He was a black uniform, strutting animal whose function in life was to give pain. And like his colleagues at the time, he shared the one affliction most common among that breed known as Nazis. He walked the earth without a heart. And now former SS Captain Lutz will revisit his old haunts, satisfied perhaps that all that waits for him in the ruins is an element of nostalgia. What he does not know, of course, is that a place like Dachau cannot exist only in Bavaria. By its nature, by its very nature, it must be one of the most populated areas in the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Death's Head Revisited, starring H.M. Winant, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Eh, uh, to be sure, Dachau. Once a peaceful place to live, but now? The camp, it's just there on the hill, isn't it? Yes. And that group of buildings, that, that would be the barracks for the workers. Workers, sir? And the officers, of course. I wonder if their quarters are still standing. Most of us would like it all burned to the ground. Oh? Such a disgrace. Yes, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, or perhaps it could be turned into a shrine. A shrine? For the men who lived there. Officers and workers alike. A million people were put to death there. Men and women and children, but not the officers. It is already a shrine. Yes, uh, I see your point. Will there be anything else? No, no, I'm off to do some sightseeing. Good day to you. You are on holiday, Herr Schmidt. What, what, what did you say, driver? The trip, sir. You have come here for pleasure? The pleasure? Oh, yes. A rest to relax, to forget. Uh, it's the best kind of trip. To rest and enjoy life. <laughs> that is all that matters to me now. For all of us, I should say. It's true. We, we work, we slave, we do the bidding of others instead of tasting the fruits of our labors. And then one day a man asks himself, what is my reward for so much sacrifice? Most certainly. Selflessly, year after year, not what we would have chosen, perhaps. Not what we would have chosen at all. No. Ah, never mind. <laughs> I'm an old man. You would not understand. But I do, sir. How could you? You are so young. Perhaps. But it seems to me, sir, that each of us makes his own reward. And eventually it will come. What we deserve most. The true product of our labors. Of seeds sown long ago. Not only for others, but in the end, for ourselves. Would you agree? <laughs> you are quite a philosopher. Only a taxi driver. And you enjoy this occupation of service? Oh, yes, very much. I am a fortunate man. How so? My needs are simple. I bring comfort to others in some small way. It is the best work anyone can do. Is it? My parents. They suffered greatly in the war. They knew very little of comfort. Ah, the war, the war. So, so, so much ancient history. But not yet forgotten. For some, perhaps. For myself, I, I hardly remember any of it. And yet, you have returned. On the contrary, I've never been to this village before. My apologies. I thought because you wish to see the camp. I'm a teacher of history, that is all. And a student, as well, of historical places. Of course, Herr Schmidt. The camp is just ahead. But look, no one has kept it up. Very few people come here. The road, the grounds, the wire fences, the, the buildings. 
Even the guard towers, the entire compound is rotting, falling apart. There's no reason to maintain it now. Perhaps you would rather visit the castle. No, no. This is what I came to see. Very well. A disgrace. Stop the car. Yes, sir? Yes, at the gate. Let me out. You are going in? Of course I'm going in. I've come all this way. I shall wait for you, then. Return in two hours' time. Two hours? There is much to study, notes to be taken. You understand. As you wish. That should be adequate. I'll come back to this spot, sir, in front of the gate. Yes, yes. And kindly be punctual. Oh, so cold here. I... No, wait! I've changed my mind! Ah, well, I, I can always walk back to the hotel if I must. But first, I look around. Hmm. Everything seems so small. Not as I remember it. There were many more barracks in the compound. And now only a few remain standing, like this one. All right, pigs. Up, up, up. Time to greet the morning on your feet. Another splendid day, a day of glorious service to the fatherland. Please, Captain. More water. A ration of bread? Anything. I beg you. I'm pleased to bring you news. News? What has happened? The war. It is over. Even better. It snowed during the night, but the temperature is only slightly below zero. So, you will assemble in the yard at once. Do not trouble yourself with clothing for the occasion. First, we do some simple exercises to increase our physical strength. Don't know. I had no shoes. It freeze. My hands. My toes. Frostbite. Sir, I cannot stand. Outside, I said. Yes, yes, outside. Nothing in there but... but an empty room. The yard. And, and the towers. I, I remember. Next to the punishment posts. One, two, three. At least they still stand. What's that? A sign. <laughs> still hanging. On that building. It says, detention. Ah, yes, I remember you. <laughs> oh, we had good times in that building. Oh, <laughs> such good times. Water, please. Water. <laughs> water, pig. You'd like water? <laughs> Unfortunately, we have no more water. Not for you. Why should you care? It's been only five days since you've been fed. Only five days, pig. Five short, inconsequential days. That is nothing. On your feet, filth. Luck. It... it doesn't matter. Such a long time ago. But it doesn't seem so. And now, now there is no one to share those memories. Good afternoon. Where? Hmm? Over here, at the window. But I, I thought there was no one inside. Who are you? Did I startle you? Well, I, I did not expect to see anyone here. Why not, Captain? Wait. Why do you call me that? But you are a captain, aren't you? No, no, I am Professor Schmidt. So, that is your name now. <laughs> you, you, you have me confused with someone else. Is that right? Or is it you who are confused? I tell you I... I never forget a face. I am Professor Schmidt. Are you? Your clothes. But about them, you... Don't approve? Why Why are you dressed that way, like... Like what? 
a prisoner. Very good. You do remember. But there are no more prisoners. No? Not now, surely. Welcome back, Captain. Why do you say that? Because I've been waiting. Waiting? For what? I can't forget a face. Especially yours. I tell you, I, I don't know you. Are you sure? I, I must go. Where are you going, Captain? That is none of your concern. Back to the town? To the life you have now? Yes, my life. I shouldn't have come. I am leaving now. I'm afraid that is no longer possible. Don't follow me. Get away! How can it be locked? There was no one near it. No one. Wasn't there. What have you done? I haven't touched the latch. Then who? I saw your own hand on it. Only a moment ago. Nonsense. As you wish, Captain. Why do you persist in calling me that? As I told you, I've been waiting. For what? For you, Captain. We've been waiting a long time. Such a long time. We? There's no one else in these ruins. Isn't there? Wait. You're... Yes. Of course I... I remember you. And well you should. How well you should, Captain Lutz. Captain Gunther Lutz of the SS. Becker. Is that you? So you do remember me. <laughs> remember you, Becker? Of course I remember you, my prize pupil. How kind of the captain, after so many years. That's what I used to call you, isn't it? You don't look so bad, Becker. No, as a matter of fact, you look quite well. You don't seem to have changed at all. Neither have you, Captain. Not really. That's why I, I didn't recognize you. You haven't changed. But how can that be? I, it isn't possible why it's been years. A great many years, Captain Lutz, since we last saw one another. And now you must be what? Uh, the caretaker? <gasps> of course. That is why you are dressed like, like a prisoner. You are the caretaker here, aren't you? In a manner of speaking. Why, Becker, I must tell you, this is not only a surprise, it, it's a rather pleasant surprise. For me too, Captain. Isn't it odd? How so? It's odd that our paths cross again and we meet now under, under somewhat happier circumstances. Happier? Yes, for some of us, happier. <laughs> What was that? What, Captain? I it sounded like... The wind, Captain? Perhaps it was the wind. Yes, <laughs> only the wind. But it is not the wind. No? Don't, don't you hear them? It sounds like... Like what, Captain? Voices. Really? What do you want? Whoever you are, come out and face me! Cowards! If that is your desire, Captain. But I assure you, they are not cowards. Then why don't they show themselves? As you wish, Captain. As you wish. Where are they? They disturb you, Captain? Stop calling me Captain, please. I'm not a soldier anymore. Soldier? You never were a soldier, Boots. The uniform you wore cannot be stripped off one's skin quite so easily. It was a part of you, a part of your body, an emblem of your mind, a tattoo, Captain. A skull and crossbones burned into your soul. What do you know about it? I was a soldier, Becker. No, Captain Lutz. You were a sadist. You go too far, Becker. Do I? Yes. How can you say such things to me now? Very easily. I speak only the truth. Then if that is the case, you must know. I know that you were a monster. Of the worst sort. One who derived pleasure from giving pain. A distinction that does not even apply to animals. Listen to me, Becker. There is no war now. 
That's all over with. It's in the past. Is it? There is no more Reich. There are no more camps. Hmm. How convenient for you to think so. Oh, it is ridiculous. It is patently ridiculous to dwell on these things. What else should I be thinking of? You did as you thought best, and so did I. I performed my duties, functioned as I was told. <laughs> Stop that noise! Odd that it should disturb you. It never used to. Not even when your victims screamed. Victims? What are you talking about? You weren't quite so sensitive when they screamed for mercy, but now they are not screaming, Lutz. They are simply reacting. They are responding. They have just listened to you offer the apologia for all the monsters of history. We did as we were told. We functioned as ordered. But that is the truth. We merely obeyed directives from our superiors. Familiar, is it, Captain? Stop this! It was the theme music at Nuremberg, the new lyrics to the Gatterdammerung. The plaintive litany of the master race as it lay defeated and dying. We were never defeated. We were betrayed by disloyalty from within, infiltrators, spies. Always the fault of others. We did not do, others did. We did it, but others told us to. Or someone else did it, but we never knew it was done. Captain Lutz, ten million human beings were tortured to death in camps like this. The disease, the lame. Women, children, tired old men. They could not contribute. You know nothing of history. In time of war there is a hierarchy. There must be. Only the strongest survive. So you burn them in furnaces. Our facilities were inadequate. But you murder them nonetheless. Not just the Jews, but the Gypsies, the Communists, the Outsiders. You shoveled them into the earth. You tore up their bodies in sadistic rage. And now you come back and wonder that the misery you've planted has lived after you? That is the real wonder, that you are so naive. There is no point in talking about this any longer. I told you I have to leave, Becker. Why did you come back, Captain Lutz? You changed your name. You are quite safe down in South America. What could possibly have brought you back here? One misses his homeland, Becker. The fatherland. One grows nostalgic for the good old days, the, when one was young and strong. I had thought, I had hoped that with the passage of time, sanity would return. People would be willing to forget the, the little mistakes of the past. They would not succumb to these primitive cries for vengeance. Little mistakes. Little mistakes. <laughs> You ask too much, Captain Lutz. You ask far too much. Why not ask for the world to stop revolving on its axis? Or for gravity to cease? Don't ask the impossible. Don't ask forgiveness from those who you've destroyed to a point past forgiveness. Enough! My driver will be returning soon. Yes, time is short, Captain. We have something of great importance to accomplish here today. And what's that? It's time for the trial. Trial? The court is convening in compound six. The court, is it? Well, what is this nonsense? Is this a joke? No joke. Your trial, Captain. Trial? For what? You are to be tried for crimes against humanity. By whom? Who will try me? <laughs> You're in insane, Becker. You were insane when I used to string you up and... That's right. When you used to string me up, Captain, suspend it over a hot pipe and feed me salt water until my tongue swelled. Burn me with cigarette butts and laugh at me when I screamed for you to please put an end to it. To have mercy and kill me. Your memory is quite good, Captain. Quite good indeed. Shall we go now? The court is waiting. Let me out! Someone, let me out of here! There is no escape. There was not then, 
and there is not now. Nothing has changed. You think the fences are in disrepair? Look again, they are secure, as they were when you were in charge. It is only fitting, wouldn't you say? No, please! Let me up! I can explain! You can try, but it will do you no good. There is no explanation suitable for this court. We have rules. Who are these people? Greetings, Sir Captain. Welcome. Won't you join us? We welcome you to the House of Pain. Do you not know their faces? Their bodies? Then, starved, tortured, beaten. For they are your legacy. You made them what they are. Now then, shall we proceed? Please! Please, this is inhuman treatment. Not, not fit for a pig. Precisely. Read it. Read the charges. The inmates of Compound 6, Dachau Concentration Camp versus Gunther Lutz, Captain SS. I am entitled to a military tribunal. Indictment 1, that he condemned to death without a trial 1,100 human beings. Ah. 1100? Where did you get such a number? Indictment 2, that he did maim and torture without provocation. Ah, rubbish. Indictment 3, that he did personally order the withholding of food and water rations, causing disease, dehydration, and death. Ah. Where is your proof? Your witnesses? Here, Captain. Remember me. I was only a child. You killed me with your own hands. Indictment 4, that he did deny medical treatment for the sick and ailing in violation of all rules of international law and common humanity. We did not have proper supplies. Our resources went to the front. To the officers? For leadership. A military force must have leadership. Indictment 5, that he did order summary executions by firing squad for those too ill and infirm to work. Eins, zwei, drei, fire! There, that will teach them the penalty for refusing their duties. And desecrated the remains with no proper burial? No, 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 I, I did not do any, any of these things I could not have. Indictment 6. Listen to me, for the love of God, listen. What? I, I, I fell asleep, yes. Yes, that's it. I, I've been dreaming. Dreaming. The courtyard outside. The hanging post. None of it used for years. Of course not. I, oh, I'm a foolish old man. Foolish and tired. Yes, you are. Very foolish. Becker, is that you? I, I, I must have dozed off. I, You've been unconscious for a while. I had such a dream. You had no dream, Captain. Of course I did. I dreamt there was a kind of trial, a kangaroo court. There were people in this room. Can you believe it? Yes. Ghostly figures. Not ghosts. Then, then what? They were here. They're still here. They have never left. It's true? They walk these buildings and the courtyard outside. But how? You did not bury them deep enough. You did not cover them with enough earth. Or the bullets were too small a caliber. Or the flames were not sufficiently hot. Perhaps there was not enough gas. Becker? Becker, you must tell me. Who are you? Really? The caretaker. Did you forget? But the trial... The trial is over. You have been found guilty. It's time to pronounce sentence. No! No! 
Would you care for a last cigarette, Herr Lutz? Yes, Lutz, it's time. For what? For the sentence. You are going to pronounce sentence? <laughs> this is what you have in mind now? You will pronounce sentence and then, and then you shall execute the sentence? Is that correct? That is the procedure, as always. And who? Who is there to carry out the sentence? Do you see anyone outside the window to help you? Anyone at all, do you? They are here. I see no one. Are you blind? Here, look for yourself! There! Pigs! Filth! You will assemble in the yard! You will crawl out of your graves to see that justice is done! You will pass sentence on Captain Lutz! Brave, brave victims! Where are you now, eh? Not so brave at all, I should say! They won't answer. Why not? Your authority no longer applies here. But yours does. I am all that is left. And you are no longer a captain. You have been stripped of your authority as of this moment. Oh, I see. Do you? Then where is the judge? Where is the jury? The executioner? You are still obsessed with procedure. Shall I tell you where they are, Becker? They're in your mind. You have hatched them out of your hatred. You have planned your vengeance out of the crazy quilt of a warped imagination sewed together with little thin threads of wishful thinking. Why didn't I kill you when I had the chance? Why didn't I... But wait. Yes? I did, Becker. I did kill you. Ah. Your memory is no longer so conveniently selective. Yes. I killed you the night. You killed me the night the Americans came close to the camp. You tried to burn it down. Of course I did. I had no choice. They would have commandeered our supplies, our weapons. And what of the prisoners? You've said that they were of no value. They were of no value. They were a burden. And yet you tried to kill everyone who was left. And in my case, you succeeded. So, it was a waste of time, wasn't it? A waste of your precious time with absolutely no practical value. And it would certainly be a waste of what little time you have left now to try to murder me again. Uh, uh, but I will. I will. I, I'll finish it. I still can. Where? Where, where, where? Where? You have been tried and found guilty of crimes against humanity. What crimes? It is the unanimous judgment of this court that from this day forward... Where? Where are you? Show yourself! And for the rest of your natural life, you shall be rendered insane. But this is gibberish! This nonsense is idiocy! Where have you gone now? Where? At this gate, this locked gate, you shut down hundreds of people with machine guns. Do you feel it now? I'll finish it once and for all! Where are you hiding? Do you feel the bullets smashing into your body? Do you feel the agony of tearing lead? Uh, uh, I'll finish it with you, Becker. Here and now. And on these posts, you hanged human beings, human beings to die slowly and painfully. Uh, they were criminals. What was their crime? Stealing water? A crust of bread? They would have died anyway. Do you feel their hunger? Do you feel their agony? Silence! And in this place, the detention room, as you call it. The things you did to human beings here are unmentionable. How does their torment feel? I refuse to give you satisfaction. If you can still reason, Lutz, if there is any portion of your mind that can still function, take this thought with you. This is not hatred. 
This is retribution. This is not revenge. This is justice. No! Liar! Liar! And this is only the beginning. Your final judgment will come from God. There! There! If you won't open the gate, I'll crawl under. You can't hold me here. No, it's a violation of my international rights. There. Becker? Becker? Where are you? Becker? Where are you? Becker? I'll finish it, you swine! Is that man? Oh, what is he? He's crazy! Oh. Herr Schmidt, I, I didn't see you. Call for a doctor, quickly! Get away! Get away! Stand back, please. What happened here? I heard him screaming, Doctor. Such sounds. Like a... like a wounded animal. He didn't seem to know where he was or who he was. Will he be all right? Not for a while. What do you mean? I have shot him so full of sedatives that he doesn't know whether he is still on the earth. Shall I help him up to his quarters, Doctor? His quarters? He registered for our best room, overlooking the square. Herr Schmidt did, if that is his name. It is the name on his passport. Where shall we take him, Doctor? His room is ready. Release it to someone else. He won't be coming back any time soon. I want him in the hospital, strapped to a bed. Yes, sir. Pity I could look after him. What happened to him, do you suppose? That's what I'd like to know. I give you my word, it wasn't my fault. No, no, I'm sure it wasn't. I drove him up the hill myself, not an hour ago. The hill? Yes, the old road. To the ruins of the camp. How curious. He said he wanted to study it. He was all right then. Are you quite sure? He must have walked or run all the way back here. To the square. But he screams. Ah, he screams. Were there any marks on him? None. Then what must he have seen? I have no idea. All I know is that he is in very real pain. More than pain. Agony. As if he has been tortured. But my taxi didn't strike him. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. He fell right here, as you saw. Clutching himself. As though he had been beaten or shot. He seemed insane. A raving maniac. Sometimes we cannot judge by appearances alone. What could happen to a man in two hours to change him so? Someone must tell me. I wish I knew. He said he was on holiday. Poor old fellow. Come here to reap the rewards of a life's work. I wonder what that life's work was to bring him to such a place as Dachau. There may be an answer to that question. Yes? But I'm sure I couldn't say. Ah, well. Tell the ambulance I will meet them at the hospital. Yes, doctor. Thank you for coming so quickly. Yes, thank you. Not at all. That is my job. To heal. Only I don't know if I can help this man. But you will try, because that is your duty. Yes, I will try to understand. Someone will have to make a proper diagnosis. I'm afraid his affliction may lie beyond my understanding. Goodbye, then, Doctor. Auf Wiedersehen. Dachau. Why does it still stand? Why do we keep it standing? Some things I will never comprehend.
there is an answer to the doctor's question. All the Dachaus must remain standing. The Dachaus, the Belsons, the Buchenwalds, the Auschwitzes, all of them. They must remain standing because they are a monument to a moment in time when some men decided to turn the earth into a graveyard. Into it they shoveled all of their reason, their logic, their knowledge, but worst of all, their conscience. And the moment we forget this, the moment we cease to be haunted by its remembrance, then we become the gravediggers. Something to dwell on and to remember, not only in the twilight zone, but wherever men walk the earth. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, twilightzoneradio.com. Visit twilightzoneradio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Death's Head Revisited, starring H. M. Winant, with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Maggie Carney, David Darlow, Richard Shavsden, Peggy Roeder, James Schneider, Carl Amari, Doug James, and Roger Wolski. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>